Hello everyone, it's Shane Brennan here. I'm the Chief Executive of the Cold Chain Federation and welcome to our first Cold Chain Federation webinar. Hoping that everyone can hear me. I'm going to go through a series of uh, slides that explain the changes we've made and the future of the Cold Chain Federation. Um, if you have any questions throughout, just start, type them into the uh, into the box, and I will um, deal with them um, where I can. Um, so let's get underway. So the first thing I'll do is I'll play you a short uh, animation that explains the changes that we've made to the federation. Right, so as you can see, a really exciting new brand, a new proposition, and I'm delighted that we're able to share this with you uh, today. What I'm gonna now do is really take you through a bit of thinking behind why we've made the changes we've made and what our new strategy is for the future of, uh, of your federation. Now, when I was uh, taken on as chief executive about a year ago uh, now, um, the board asked me to, uh, to take a look at where we were as an organization and where we were heading. And you have to start really from, from first principles. You know, what is our mission as an organization? What, 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 what do we need to exist? You know, and what, 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 what's our purpose? And what became very clear was that the, the reason that, the, that this federation exists and the reason we were created over 100 years ago um, was to be a voice for the cold chain. And actually, as someone who wasn't from a logistics background, actually explaining to the people outside of our industry what the cold chain actually is and why it matters is in itself a really important, an important mission. And so the new brand is really primarily about making sure that we are explaining and understanding and, and unveiling the cold chain to, 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 to the outside world. So our mission is to be a strong voice for the cold chain. I'm really working on key issues that matter. And there are three big um, issues that, uh, that, that I think that really sort of crystallize um, our kind of focus area. The first one is tackling food security. It's always been about food security. It's our number one issue and we forget and or we neglect the issues around make, keeping people's food safe at our peril. The second big issue, the big thematic um, that sort of influences our mission is the fact that we, we sit underneath, we underpin, we facilitate a food industry that's incredibly dynamic. It always has been. We've been through so many changes, but particularly today, as we look to the near future, the, the extent of the changing demands of consumers, changing pressures and expectations of the food chain uh, mean that there are big changes afoot. 
and we underpay, we as our logistics providers provide the, the, the foundation for that. And crucially, and above all, the issues around climate change, the pressures that are coming our way as an industry um, because of the global pressure, literally global pressure, there is around our, the way we consume uh, fossil fuels and the emissions that we put into the atmosphere will impact a lot of the regulatory framework that will, that will dominate our businesses for the next 20 years. Now, one of the things is when we change, obviously, the brand from the Food Storage and Distribution Federation, we, what we're absolutely clear about is we are not moving away from our commitment to working on food issues. So cold chain food remains uh, at the centre of what we're about. Our membership is still 100% food logistics providers um, and the storage distribution side. And those issues there that you see on screen remain areas of work for me as your representative in government interaction and working and providing solutions in those, in those areas. The other thing to say about the Cold Chain Federation is, if anything, our strategic focus is about trying to look and extend our reach vertically. One of the things, when we start talking about some of the issues and challenges we have as an industry, the, uh, the biggest questions really are about how can we do this in collaboration? How can we make sure that if we let, take this whole chain from field to fork and think about the different stages in between, how can we understand the shared challenges we have to drive efficiencies, to improve effectiveness, and to, and to make, a, make a difference. And let's be clear, we have got issues. You know, there are big issues, representation issues that we need to be working on together as an industry. Um, whether it's issues to do with the vehicles that we're driving and where they're allowed to go and how they are allowed to operate, or whether it's issues to do with the, uh, with the facilities we run and the way in which they are uh, regulated. And of course, the B word, Brexit. The brand change is the most visual uh, defining uh, indicator of the fact that we are launching a new three year strategy um, for, the, for, for the Federation. It's something that the board has worked on over the past six months and I was pleased to get unanimously supported at the recent AGM last May. So the strategy effectively, is, and anyone who wants a copy of the strategy in the membership, please just contact me and I'll happily share a copy with you um, um, so, you can, so you can read it. But it's really a way of making sure that we're accountable to you, that we've actually got a clear plan of where we're gonna be this year, next year, and the year after. It identifies areas where we're working. It tells what we, we assess what we do now and what is our strengths and where um, we're going in the future. And it crucially, it maps out how we're going to change through, the, through this year and into the next three years so that we get to our end goal of being this, this strong voice, this strong go-to organisation for the cold chain um, that, that, that we believe is so very much needed. The other thing that we've, we wanted to do in setting out a strategy is to really sort of make sure people understand what federations are here for, what trade associations like us do. And having worked myself uh, for more than 15 years in trade bodies, it's very clear that you know, some people understand them and work with them very closely and, have, and see them as a big part of their business. Others really ask the question, well, what is it even there for in the first place? So the first job really is to make it simpler and more accessible, what you get as members of this federation and how you can access your services. And so we break it down into these three areas. We work in these three areas for you. At the foundation is support and advice, networking and representation. And the brands that you saw flash up in the animation are, are really a way of, of, of providing that gateway to that. So um, Cold Chain Voice, which is the representation work, primarily here to defend you and your interests, but also to effect change. On, on pieces of regulation and activities that can make that will actually make it easier for you to do your job and also making sure and actually probably the biggest the the the, the, the everyday job making sure that you're informed about the things that are happening that will impact on your business then we then about we're here about we're here to bring the industry together and cold chain events is really about running the, the various events from conferences through to seminars and working groups on key challenges bringing you together to do that and, and in communications we know you, you'll see a new website um, coldchainfederation.org.uk 
and new e-communications coming your way out of the Federation to make sure you're properly informed about what we're doing and what you need to know. And then, but then the foundation of it all is our advisory work, our advisory service. And I'll talk a bit more about this in a moment, but the assured advice we provide that we are the, 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 the best afford, the best, the most cost effective and the sort of neutral place to come to for key advice on areas like health and safety and food safety and others. We provide the industry standard terms and conditions. And of course, we run the climate change agreement, which many of our members benefit significantly from. So just to summarize then, on, call, on voice, um, just going to sort of run through uh, what we mean by the issues that we're working on on your behalf. And really break it down into the two areas of storage and distribution. So when it comes to storage, the key issues that we're really talking about are issues to do with food. So food safety issues, traceability issues and food waste issues. Health and safety issues, particularly, it is different working in the cold. There are specific challenges, specific regulations and specific procedures that we need to have in place and follow. Um, and we're the place, we are the place to come and talk about those, those issues and find answers and solutions. Refrigeration systems obviously have significant responsibilities around them. Manual handling issues and staff training. Looking to the future, and well, the, the very much the present and the future, issues around innovation, understanding the trend in automation and AI, understanding how data systems uh, uh, integrate and how to use data in a way that's going to make a difference, a, a significant difference to our operations and our standards and our efficiencies, and investing in clean growth. You know, if we weren't talking, if we as a country weren't talking about Brexit, we would be entirely talking about how we're going to basically power our economy, create jobs and create value um, in a way that doesn't have the same impact on the climate that it's had in the past. And of course, climate change. Climate change standing out like a big red beacon as the biggest single regulatory area where I'll be working for you on your behalf um, within government, trying to ensure that the regulatory framework is, is right. Um, and that uh, we're given the credit we're due, as well as looking, showing that we are providing, we are working and working to do the right things when it comes to uh, reducing our climate impact. On haulage, again, similar similar issues, but obviously they're very specific specific contexts. There are issues to do with the physical operation of the vehicles, from congestion and safety, urban consolidation issues, basically reducing empty running and vehicles on the road, and looking at how the, the different requirements of consumers around empty running. Uh, sorry, last mile solutions. When it comes to the trailer issues, you know we've got significant innovation in the space, different you know uh, 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 technical requirements. Um, being adapted all the time by the manufacturers and again being a forum for understanding that is uh, important to us. Regulatory changes around operate and best practice. The fridge on the front of the trailer um, and on the vehicle if it's not a, if it's a rigid vehicle um, is probably one of the more controversial areas and we've been very active over the past year in this area and Tim Moran our president and myself and a number of other members um, were with the minister the environment minister Therese Coffey on the first of first of the month talking about how we can work together with government for a collective plan for reducing emissions from on-vehicle refrigeration in a way that actually is realistic for the industry to cope to cope with and absorb and uh, meets the pace of and a uh, balance of other requirements we have as industry obviously growth of alternative technologies of refrigeration specifically the issues around red diesel you know our biggest single uh, concern is the is some immediate removal of the qualification for red diesel for operators in using in their fridge where that's required of them and obviously issues around noise obviously in the cabs and drivers you know we've got a big we've got an industry driver shortage issues around skills and issues around understanding and knowledge of operating temperature controlled haulage and obviously the vehicle the engine on the vehicle itself with fuel costs and the long-term ambitions of government to see the decarbonization of our transport generally and things like modal shift. So we've got a pretty busy agenda, but the crucial thing in all of this, the idea behind the Cold Chain Federation is to absolutely focus in on those issues that are specifically about Cold Chain. Because there are other organizations out there that represent the interests of logistics, they represent the interests of the food industry, 
but none of them are absolutely focused in on cold chain and that's what we're here for and that's what we will, we will be about for the next three years and, and, and the long term. I was talking about our events. Um, so we've been uh, doing some work this year. We've already, some of you will have participated in some of our events that we've run this year. And we're looking to really refresh and reinvigorate the opportunities we have for bringing the industry together. And that includes um, big set piece events. Um, we had a cold storage conference in, in March, which we were very pleased with, which was very well attended with some great speakers and some great insights, a real place to come and come out of the business and take a step back and understand where the industry is heading, understand how other businesses are doing and how we can work. Expert groups, you know, we very clear, we sort of inherited a committee structure that we felt was you know, important. You know, we, it has to be a case that what we decide and what we say is representing your interests as an industry. But the idea of committees is increasingly difficult for people to justify the time to be involved with. The expert group model is much more about bringing the, bringing the questions and the discussion to you in more in uh, remote formats and, um, and uh, really having sure that we have got those networks of expertise. And the three areas we're working with expert groups are on warehousing, on distribution, and on technical and safety issues. And if anyone's interested in issues around the expert groups, then please get in touch with us and we'll be circulating more information over the coming weeks. And then our boards, we have a management board and we have, we are creating two new advisory boards. One, for strategic, uh, the strategic advisory board, which is an opportunity for every member, senior people from every member company to have a say at least once a year on your industry and where we're heading and, our federa and your federation. And an emerging leaders board for the, next, for the generation of people coming who are going to be uh, running the running the running our industry in the future? Again, more details of those to come in the coming weeks. But the key thing that I want to put on your radar right now is the 12th of September when we're coming together at a national conference centre in Birmingham to talk about the future of refrigeration transport. We've got a really exciting programme of speakers and a really uh, important uh, topic, given the political work we're doing right now on on-vehicle refrigeration. And we're delighted to have the support of the companies that we have already, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more. Now, just the final thing I wanted to uh, section of this presentation and this, this webinar is really about the advisory service. There's the practical ways that you as members can take advantage of your membership. And one of the things we want to do is to try and take what has potentially been a bit of a, um, uh, uh, of a hard to sort of pin down exactly what you get from a membership um, offer to make it much more specific and much more clear, and much more accessible for you, for you all, whether you're a storage distribution member or whether you're an associate member of the Federation. And they break down into five different product areas. One for cold chain legal, which I'll explain in a moment, cold chain compliance, cold chain connect, of which today's webinar is the first, cold chain energy, and cold chain exchange. And there may well be other products that we bring on stream over the course of the next uh, couple of years. So starting with cold chain legal, cold chain legal is our terms and conditions offer. So as a member of the Federation in storage distribution, you can use the cold chain federation's recommended uh, uh, conditions for storage, temperature controlled storage distribution. They've been updated and reissued as of last week, two weeks ago. They've been future proofed and crucially now we're able to offer a new helpline staffed by lawyers to actually help you with specific questions that come up as a result of the issues around your commercial terms. That's a new document. You will hopefully receive that in the post if you're a storage distribution member, but if you need a, a, a e-copies are available from the office. We've made no significant changes to the detail and the key provisions in the temp, in these in these in these uh, conditions in these documents, but we have updated the structure and we have made sure it's future proof and incorporated issues like Brexit. Uh, proofing in there. There's a work note that's available, it's available in PDF format, but also a Word version is available if you want to take that and adapt it into your own corporate documents. The legal helpline is available um, working out working week, Monday to Friday. Access that by contacting the office and we will refer you on. And we're running a bespoke webinar on using our terms and conditions next week on the 16th of June. And we'll circulate it about that this afternoon. Cold chain compliance, 
Now, this is the area where we've spent a significant amount of investment in the past, uh, the past year. And this is really using the benefit of a, of a scheme called primary authority, which means that we, working in partnership with a local authority, are able to provide you with um, we're able to provide you with uh, 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 advice and guidance that um, that uh, uh, that that, uh, that, that well, if you follow it then you have the benefit of knowing that if you follow the industry standard guidance assured by us, that you will not be challenged by your local authority if you follow that guidance. Um, control team compliance is providing advice in two, two key areas. One is health and safety, and the other is food safety. And so one of the things that, so when you think about culture and compliance, think about it as being the Federation providing you with you know, definitive advice on how to operate the cold chain in those two areas. And the way it's structured is that we'll be publishing, and the first one in September, a, health and, a managing health and safety and cold storage distribution guide document, which will be a summary of all the key things you need to bear in mind when operating a cold store or a cold distribution business. And secondly, we'll be providing one on food safety, which is about food safety in the cold chain. Now these guides, um, so those will be available, they'll be available free to air, we'll be publishing those and anyone can actually actually view those because we have see our responsibility is helping to ra raise the knowledge of everyone within our industry and without it. Um, there will then be, alongside the main guides, there'll be some supporting detailed guides where we dive into specific topical areas, um, particularly ammonia refrigeration systems, which is one that we work, we've been doing for quite some time, that'll be published under the cold chain compliance brand soon, and food contamination from clandestine uh, travellers on the food safety side. Those are just two examples of, of what will be a, pure, a significant library of documents that will be coming on screen under culture compliance, all of which benefiting wherever possible from assurance from our primary authority. We'll also be issuing bulletins on, on news and activities in these areas under the culture and compliance brand. But above all, the key thing to bear in mind about this is that while you know, there will be all the resources will be there for you to access and read at your leisure and to use in your business, but actually we'll also be on the end of the phone, able to deal with your specific questions about these areas and where possible, and, and in many cases, if you have a specific compliance question under these headings um, that you want to get some assured advice from, we can then refer that to our primary authority partner, get assured advice, and then you know that you've got sort of legal certainty that if you follow that advice, then you won't be challenged. Um, just one, one point, let's just go back slightly. On, on, the, on, the, on the terms and conditions, on the legal advice, that says 16th of June, that should actually be the 16th of July, um, um, as in next week. So apologies for that for that error. Um, Culture Connect. So Culture Connect is really about providing you with an easy to access resource to basically for you and anyone in your business to learn about topics that are relevant to the cold chain. Um, obviously, we're doing a session right now on the, on the Federation itself next week on terms and conditions. And then we've got pro others programmed in on dealing with clandestine contaminate food contamination from clandestine travelers but one coming up on the health and safety issues and there will be more and one of the things many more and over the course of hopefully it's become a relatively familiar uh, resource for you all to use in your business to help to develop your staff and to make sure you're on top of the key issues if you're an associate member then it's another way for us to be able to showcase what you're doing and your knowledge and expertise to our members through these uh, this cold chain connect uh, platform which obviously will work on not only as a live broadcast and a live participation event, but also with recordings that we'll have stored on our website as a library resource for everyone to use on uh, an uh, ongoing basis. Coaching energy, probably our single biggest challenge is around how we're going to use energy, both in storage and distribution over the coming, uh, coming few years. Um, and the biggest thing that we do as a federation in terms of in terms of value to the industry is run the climate change agreement scheme, which will, is on course to save the industry more than 10 million pounds in tax this year. Um, and I'm leading the uh, the work to see if, see if we can secure a new climate change agreement deal for the period after 2023 when the current scheme comes to an end. Um, but 
Culture. So Culture Energy, the foundation is that, is providing that climate change agreement service, that, that, that really quite significant administrative support that's required to run that scheme effectively in your business. But also we want to go a step beyond that. We want to look at how we can provide more of a service to the industry around benchmarking performance so you have a better understanding of how you're doing and how you're using and consuming energy. And I'm providing a forum for showcasing the best innovation and tools and solutions and strategies that we as an industry need to adopt as we look to bear down on this single biggest uh, or second biggest coal, uh, cost center in the business and the single area of most regulatory focus we're going to face in the years ahead. And then cold chain exchange. For those of you operating distribution businesses, the cold chain exchange product is the first of a sort of commercial service that we're going to be providing under the new, the new brand. Um, and it's really essentially, the best way to summarize it is Uber for fridge trucks. Where we're providing as operators the opportunity to visualize on screen availability of empty vehicles and loads to try and help to drive efficiencies um, within, within the chain. Um, it's, a, it's a premium service that you can subscribe to, but as a member of the Federation, you get a discount from being, uh, or you get uh, additional additional value from uh, from being part of the exchange. And I'm delighted to say that, you know, we, as we sort of just, just, just started it in the last few weeks, we already have 14 of the largest companies in the sector signed up, and we're really hopeful that it's gonna, gonna grow quite fast and provide um, a real, real tangible value for, for, for distribution members. So to wrap up, and thank you all for your attention um, um, to this part of the, of the webinar, um, the new Cold Chain Federation is an exciting, it's based on an exciting new strategy that we've been really, really pleased to, to, to work on over the past, past year to develop for you, and we're really glad to be able to share it with you all now. Um, and we've been really pleased with the reaction we've had over the past, over the past uh, few weeks. But, to, you know, but things to remember, we are of the industry for the industry. We're a not-for-profit company that's here to basically represent your interests. Our membership streams break down into, 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 into full members, associate members, and life members. We've, I, we've streamlined the governance so that it's more accessible than we've ever been for people to get involved in what we do and to shape what, what the Federation is all about. Not-for-profit company, run by members for the members with lots of different ways to participate. But crucially, crucially within this, um, it's the involvement that you as companies have with us that makes us strong. And of course, that means joining us, but actually it means getting involved in our activities. I'd love to have your feedback on what you think of the new, of the new brand, the new offer, the new activities. And as we develop them, and you know, many of them are just starting out this week as, as, as new services for the industry, your feedback on making sure they are relevant to you for the future is absolutely critical to us. And I'm really, really pleased and thank you for your, all for your ongoing support for your federation. Thank you very much. Now, I haven't had any questions come through so as I've run through those slides, but I've got just just pause just briefly to see if anyone's got any questions they want to uh, want to share um, um, or ask before I sign off. We'll just type them into the into the type bar. Okay. Brilliant. Well, I think, you know, I think it'd be useful to get your feedback on the, on the webinar and how it went. And if anyone got any questions, just pick up the phone and give us a call at any point this afternoon or, or any point in the next few weeks. But I'm really, really pleased to have been able to share with you what we're all about today. And I look forward to uh, working with you all in the future.